Hey guys, Sebastian Ockboy here from Germany. Best wipes only, shit community, shit magazine. What's up? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Shit Podcast. We are about to have a nice skate talk with such a nice skateboarder. He is Sebastian Hofbauer, a very creative skateboarder. He can be very technical with his tricks. He can be very magical with his tricks. He is a beast for mini ramp and also for ledges. He is Sebastian Hofbauer. What's up, Sebastian? How is he going? Hey, nice to meet you. Everything fine, just... Came home from skating, had a shower, and now talking to you. Nice, nice. That's nice. So, where are you from, man? Um, I was born in Munich, like more or less, yeah, southern capital from Bavaria and Germany. All right. And um, I, was young, I went, went to Spain. That's why before we were talking in Spanish, and now I'm living in Ulm. I don't know if you know it. It's like city in southern Germany as well, with the biggest cathedral like in the world all right but you are officially from germany or yes. from spain or yes. both or no actually from germany but right. i don't have i don't have either neither german nor spanish blood okay i was born in germany like all my grandparents are from different parts of europe so i'm like super mix of everything oh that's nice so do you travel a lot Yeah, I used to travel a lot now with Corona. It's actually impossible to travel. Yes. And um, talking about that and talking about this year, how has this year been for you and your skate career? You know, pretty weird year. Man. Yeah, it was pretty strange. Uh, I'm not only skateboarder, you know, that I'm teacher as well. You're so, a teacher? Yeah, for primary school, for elementary school, for kids. All right. And what do you teach? Everything, elementary? Everything, all kind of subjects, actually. Okay, math, uh, science, uh, also Biology, Spanish? Or... German, German oh. as well. Yeah. Okay. And then when, like, the COVID shit started, we had all that homeschooling, like you guys as well, I think. Yes. And I was working, like, in the morning, doing, like, all the videos. In the afternoon, We had good weather, we had a lot of luck with the weather. I always went skating, actually every day, and on the, in the evening started working again. So besides all that bad situation, I had the opportunity to go skateboarding, like actually a lot. Every day went out. Here in Germany, we also had the luck that we were allowed to go out. In some other countries, it was like forbidden to go out, but we could go out on our own just to do sports. And skateboarding is a sport. I always took my car, went somewhere without anyone, skated f flat ground, whatever, searched street spot, took the rail in my car with me, like a flat rail, a curb, whatever, and had two okay. years of sessions on my own. So it was not that bad, actually. For sure. And don't you teach skateboarding? And... I, I used to, I used to. Like, as I worked for the government, government can like say you have to go now to this particular city like they can do it once or twice in your life and i used to live in another city and then government sent me to the city like all where i'm living now now since i'm like lifetime worker for government they can't send me anywhere else and then in my old city i used to teach skateboarding and now where i'm living I'm not teaching yet. I tried to start skateboarding in school, but you know how it is. It's like difficult. everyone, oh, it's really cool, really cool. And the government guys told me, yeah, really nice idea. And everyone was like so, so super stoked on it. And I was like really happy. And I was totally sure that it would work out. But at the end, someone of these assholes like told me, <laughs> no, 
it's not part of that. No, 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 we can't do it. it and I was like, come on. Come on, like, this is keyboarding. Yeah, two, two months talking to you guys and then last moment you say no, can't be like that. But, uh -oh. but, but it's a maybe, you, you are going to teach skateboarding maybe the another year or, or it's not possible? Mm. Uh, right now it's not possible, but I think uh, we probably can make it possible. Okay, let's make yeah. it possible. Skateboarding yeah, in, in school right now it's pretty hard to do it. Like with all the rules and everything. Yes. Left. And, and but, with the fact that the skateboarding is dangerous. And that yeah, we can control it's not that. that dangerous, actually. Yeah. If you do it in school, you have to put them on full protection and then it's not that dangerous anymore. Yeah, that's true. And um, what what do you prefer? Teaching or skating? Yeah, obviously skating. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I understand, of course. It's just like, one thing is like my passion. I really like my job. I really like my job, but it's not my passion. I, I would not. Job. Yeah, I, I really like it, but I would never. For skateboarding, when I travel somewhere, without problems, I could get up at six o'clock in the morning just to go to that particular spot. Like one day, I have to go there. You only can go there at six o'clock in the morning. I would go there for sure. And oh. every day at six o'clock in the morning when I have to go to school, it's like, <laughs> I wouldn't mind sleep a bit more. One All more right. coffee and I go, but it's not like, oh, I I'll go for sure. I go motivated and really enjoy my job most of the time, but it's not like same passion, you know what I mean? Yes, it's not my yes, I, I can understand you. Um, where is the best place to skate in Europe? You, wow. you said that you travel a lot. So, yeah. what is a nice place? If you uh, can give us an advice. There is no best place. Depends on what you like skating. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Like many people consider like Barcelona the best city for skating. Others say Berlin, capital from Germany. Berlin, I personally, I like it, but it's not like the spots I really like. Like you mentioned before, I like like a more creative approach towards skateboarding. And I really like the Northern Europe architecture, like Denmark, Sweden, they have super nice, like kind of monuments you can skate. All like right. they have these water pipes. I like China banks as well. And they have it there. Also like the skate parks they built. It's not like a typical skate park. Like sometimes in Germany, skate parks like, like a zoo. No, okay. So everyone is outside and they integrate kind of the skate park in the cities. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah, yes, of course. as if it was part of the city. And that's what I really like. You sometimes don't know. Is it a skate park, a street spot? What is it? But of that's course. what I really like. Of the, also like like Stalin Plaza in Prague. Okay. Really. You, you know I have it? Watching team videos, yes. Yeah, because of the wipes, it's not uh, not perfect ground. Ground is really nice, but it's like rough and perfect at the same time. It, the noise it makes and just the wipes there. You always have to go upstairs like, I don't know, takes like maybe three, four minutes, like just going upstairs. You arrive there and you're really actually already exhausted a bit. But okay. you go there and sun is out and then a bit wind and like the scenery, you it's like the best view over the city start skating there and like you it's, you get there and just start smiling because of the vibes it doesn't ha always have to be has to be the best spot it's just okay. the scenery everything like el conjunto yes of <laughs> course together it's yeah it's true yeah. Um, what do you prefer talking about spots to escape in a skate park or to skate in the streets uh, actually, it depends where I live. There neither are good skate parks nor good skate spots. So, so I just go usually to a skate depends. park. Or depends like on the spot. Okay. All uh, right. Yeah, that's why I also like. I'm really happy that now we have mini ramp here. Really like mini ramp skating as well. But I'm actually really open minded. Depends on if I skate with like that treasure guys when I lived in Spain skated with all, 
I was like 21, 22. I skated with all the guys, with oh. all the treasure wipes, like these kind of pole skaters with tattoos, drinking beer. And then I was like, wow, nice transition skating. Sometimes when I lived in Germany, most homies only skate a curb. So I just skate a curb and many pet with them. And I, when I'm on tour, I really try to skate everything besides the big spots. I don't want to skate these big spots anymore because they destroy your body and you jump down the next day, everything hurts and you can't. It's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on skating for. But did you have any injury in a big no, spot? No, nothing, nothing. No. In 20 years of skating, nothing. All right. Yeah. I'm with you I'll with put, that. I I'll prefer it. Something like that, man. I prefer the small things and yeah, yeah. just having fun. A perfect exactly. flat ground can be can be perfect. Yeah, just having fun. That's why I like like also when you ask which city I like, I like cities or countries where you can skate from one spot to the to the next spot. Just skate there. Just them having a beer there, skating, keep on skating. That's why I like small spots like a China bank. Everyone can have fun in a China bank. Like just if you don't skate that good. Just do five O's and have so much fun trying space like whatever. Just having yeah, good wipes to rolling, yeah. You just need you you don't need to do tricks for having fun. Exactly. Um, and that's beautiful about skateboarding. Um so what do you think about the community in all these countries? Because you have traveled a lot, but um the, the community, the skate community is the same in Germany, in Spain and in the other countries, or what kind of difference have you seen in this? Mm, yeah, the, the skate no question. Yeah, also depends on the culture, I think. Like, for Spanish sure, people, I, I lived in southern Spain, like in the south, where people almost live in the streets. I always say we live in the streets when we are there, like, all right, all out meeting each other every day. Not, yeah, it's a bit hard and rough to say, but not everyone is working and they have much more free time like in other countries. That allows you to meet with your homies every day. So they just hang out because they have also the time, the opportunity, good weather, which also allows you to hang out everywhere. Different architecture, like in Spain, you usually have these plazas, just you can hang out or skate park, it's like more in this city center. Are very unique, compare, yeah. yeah. If I just compare here, like Spain and Germany, it's totally different. Yeah, we don't have that main places. Usually people have to work until late. Weather is not that good, so you don't get the same vibes. It's just impossible. And also, I when I'm when I was in Spain, I was just skating. I didn't work. Now I work and I have like one and a half hour or two hours. I say I go skating I, and I skate just, 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 just. Sometimes okay. I don't even talk to anybody almost. You know what I mean? You For just sure want to skate. Wow. Yeah. Disconnect. Just go for it. Skate. And yeah, it's not the same. When, when you then have like every day, eight hours time, you are obviously hang out with the guys for sure it's yeah. true that's true it's, yeah, it's uh, so hard to compare and talking about other countries when you're in other countries like you're always like on mission you know you go to from with the car with the team whatever you're just there from one spot to the other so you, you don't really get to know the skate scene there so it's, it's a pretty tricky question actually pretty hard to answer yeah, yeah, yes, I can understand that. So let's talk about skateboarding evolution. What do you think about the skateboarding evolution? Making a comparison between nowadays and maybe the moment when you started skating in the early two thousands. Yeah, yeah, so much happening. There was so much oh, happening. For sure. Like I've been skating for almost twenty years now, like oh. eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, long like, career. 2001 or so I started I don't know like 18 <laughs> 20 years that doesn't actually matter there was so much happening like when I started skating you were the hero when you did like kickflip tail slide yes you know I mean? kickflip backside tail slide maybe or like 
three flip in flat. Everyone was stoked on it. Now it's like super basic. It's like the main level was growing so much in the last years. It's like there's such a big level and many, many good skaters. Now, if you want to like make it and yeah, I know, I know if you want to make it or like people are realizing who you are, it's not enough to be just really good. You have to find your own approach towards skateboarding, I think. Yeah. Uh, everyone in every city has good skaters, but it's, I, I feel, it, but it's my personal opinion. I feel it's like most of these standard skaters, it's like standard tricks. Everyone is doing the same and, and everything looks the same. It's like clone skating. Everyone is trying to imitate someone else. There's like one everyone is looking up to and everyone's trying to do the same. Obviously, they can't even do it, but they're all trying to do the same, trying to copy the style or not even not trying to have style, like just trying to make it as if it was like not difficult. It, yeah, you know what I mean? Just yes, of course. Trying to make it look easy trying to make it look easy but with this first style like hands down and you see oh that's not you you're just trying to do that that's what i'm seeing it's like when i started it was more like just doing the trick improve yourself and getting better people weren't that concerned about this fashion style thing which i was talking about now like with the fake style all that stuff also, what I started talking about, just to make it or get yourself known, is more like, yeah, you should do something a bit different or have some something else. Like, just, I don't know, Dylan Reed, that's just one example. I don't know why I was thinking of him. I was never such a big fan, but he made everything like look powerful, stylish, nice. You could see him like without seeing his face and everyone knows it's him. Yes. Or, I, I don't know, some skaters like that. Even, uh, yeah, there are some skaters, you just, oh, it's him. It has to be him or, or even her. It doesn't matter. It must just, or trick selection, different kind of trick selection. Or also it's important. There are so many good curb skaters, flat ground skaters or curb and flat ground skaters. Nowadays, it's more important than ever to be like well-rounded, skating everything. And so yeah. many kids are really good at it. It's yeah. so crazy. So, do you prefer a style more than difficulty when you are watching a skater? In yes. your personal opinion, what do you think? Yes. Yes. Much more important. Yeah. If it's I possible, know. if it's possible, both. Yes, of course. Yeah, but I, I personally would never, yeah, I want to watch it. I don't watch that many skate videos, actually, but if I w watch something, I, if it, I don't like it, it I, if I don't like this guy, I just can't keep on watching. Okay. It has to be something, like, particular, like, also can be, like, a super much aggressive style, and you think, oh, he will die doing all the <laughs> tricks. Yeah. yeah, some Colombian skaters are like that. Yeah, on the like, like skaters. Yeah, yeah. Like Milton Martinez is someone. Do you know Milton Martinez? Do you know? Who yeah. He? Super or aggressive style. You Ooh, sometimes think, oh, oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yeah. Every, his stuff is very dangerous. Exactly. Mm. That's but super nice to watch as well. Yes, but on the other hand, we have skaters like Sergio Santoro. Do you know who is him from Brazil? Yeah, it's a good, good, good homie of me. Talking about style, he's a master in, in, in that sense. Yeah, he's, I really like him. He's a good homie of me. You oh, want to still, yeah, a video together. All right, so have you escaped with him? No, we actually planned he wanted to visit me this year, but... It was impossible. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, but would would so, match perfectly. Like both liking manuals, like cruising, yeah, tracks. Nice. So talking about advices and technique, skate technique, 
What is your best advice to be a master in manual tricks? What is your advice to master the manuals? Well, to get the balance for a beginner, yeah. you know? What would I, be your I, advice? Yeah, I always skate like super loose tracks. All right. Super, 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 super like the David tracks. I didn't even know he skated this loose tracks when I was younger, like 13 years, 14 years old. You just don't realize what's happening everywhere that just all the skaters telling you oh what's up with your tracks and I, why i i like them like that no you can't skate like that no i just kept on skating like that like super loose and you're like actually balancing all the time you land the trick and you have to land it perfectly if you don't land it perfectly you just won't get the trick all right that's my advice because you're all the time like balancing not yes. the manual balance like if it this would be the like the deck usually the balance is like that the manual and the nose manual but having super loose tracks you're doing all the time like like a snake all right yeah exactly okay good advice yeah and you're training all the time like you're training your ankles train all, the time. all the time yeah i've got so, like super strange balls on my ankles it's like <laughs> muscles it's it's really oh. stretches yeah probably because i'm doing all that shit all the time okay if you got ankle problems doctors gives you the advice to do this movement you know what i mean like this yes. is the ankle exactly and if you skate loose tracks you're doing that all the time and you've got at the beginning it's like oh it's oh it's so loose you skate the board like one week and then it's the normal board for you and everything you just boom on another belts level that's my personal opinion all right so do you prefer loose trucks of course yeah or some type butter trucks okay super 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 loose super and both the front trucks yeah. and and the back exactly trucks? yeah both. as loose as possible all right so let's talk about supporting um how did you get your first sponsor well how was that experience it's... For you but it was pretty a long time ago it was like i skated with the, uh, some older guys and one had like contact to munich like to the bigger city munich everyone knows munich and the homie of him uh, just had started his own company and then when i first got some birds also like got hooked up from the local shop when i was pretty young I don't know, 30 years, like after one or two years of skating, and then uh, things started happening. All right. Yeah. Just mm. like, well, well, yeah, like I had the luck that I actually always got support. Always. Since that moment, you always um, have yeah, had Yeah, there a was some time when I quit everything a bit because I didn't like, like, the wipes or whatever but actually pretty soon again all right um who are your sponsors right now it's like the light skateboards from california the okay. avenue trucks from california as well autobahn wheels from california then i got wicked bearings safety shoes grip tape east shoes like this big shop from northern europe from denmark skate pro uh, I, i got a lot of so socks as well stinky socks pretty sick socks then sometimes i get some boxer shirts from from amsterdam pockies boxer shirts then i get support from real real jeans like real clothes real jeans what else um and like Like CBD creams from Austria, from Cream, it's called. All right. Sponsors from a lot of countries. Yeah. All right. That's nice. East shoes. I don't know if I've said it. No. Okay. No. A lot of sponsors. And what do you think is the most important aspect of having a sponsor? The love that the brand gives to you or the team or what is, what is important for you? talking about aspects 
it's uh, pretty sick to get support because skateboarding is pretty expensive and you don't have to concern about uh, uh, yes. buying, wasting money. But I also feel like it's a relation of taking and giving. I also feel like having responsibilities. I don't want to be that kind of skateboarder that just takes, takes and doesn't give back anything. I never like in... I know how many years I've been sponsored. I've never sold a single board, a deck to someone else, another shoe, nothing. I've never sold stuff to get some money. Just I took it for me. And if I saw that a homie was in need of board, I just gave it to him, like take it or whatever. That's okay. But selling that stuff, I, I didn't like that kind of yeah, dealing with the sponsorship. Yeah, and that's like nice. Obviously important, the relation and the motivation it gives to you. If it's like, for example, riding for a board company from California, gets you hyped, keeps you motivated, whatever. For sure. Yeah, yeah and sometimes I still feel like a small kid when the boxes arrive, no new stuff is coming. Yeah, that's true. And talking about the industry in general, what do you think about the skateboarding industry? Do you think I, that is giving the support that we need? Uh, depends. It's depends. actually not, yeah, not skateboarding industry who's giving the support. It's more like, yeah, the first question was like what I was thinking of the skateboarding industry. I think they are like a bit retarded, actually. They just got stuck in the 19th there was no improvement considering boards trucks wheels yeah wheels you can't change that much but boards and trucks there's still space it can't be that like every kind of sport for example biking you're not biking for five years then you go biking with your old bike and everyone tells you hey what's up with your bike it's so so old, there's not not that, doesn't have that, doesn't have that, whatever. And in skateboarding, it's still the same. Like, board, when I started skating, like, 20 years ago, it's exactly the same. The same. And I think, yeah, it's pretty strange. I, okay. I sometimes get the impression, maybe they don't want to improve the boards because they want to make more money, whatever. I'm just, just saying. Just right. saying. Maybe. That, company I'm riding for like the light, light skateboards for example I've been riding for them for one and a half two years now and I've never broken a board never never, never. no there is like super carbon fiber light reinforcement whatever and it's just so good always the same pop everything like super responsive perfect perfect all right exactly that's why I think it's just like a bit retarded also, I feel like it's controlled skateboarding by two or three big businesses. I don't, I won't talk bad, bad about anyone, but it's controlled by like, like bit like Barracks, Trasher, and maybe someone else. And they say and decide what's cool and what's not cool and how skateboarding should look like. There's on one side, like the Trasher, like more the hardcore, whatever skating, like mm -hmm. die, whatever. And let's call it the clean, flat ground, curb skating, controlled by barracks. And there's just like, there's nothing in between. There is, obviously, but I feel like it's two or three big main things controlling almost everything. Also the brands a bit. That's interesting. And um, talking about the Olympics in this sense, do you love the idea? Or do you hate yeah. the idea? Do you, do you like love the, the idea? more yeah. yeah because if you want to hate you always can hate usually people yeah tend to hate about something without even yeah really thinking about it i think there are more advantages than disadvantages because olympics means more acceptance whatever but the most important thing is like more money more support. The skateboarding is an olympic sport they have to build more skate parks and good skate parks. It's yeah. just impossible. If you 
you need good skate parks to train and so every bigger city should build at least one good skate park in the future and there should be more acceptance you always can say no sorry I, i'm training for the olympics <laughs> if your streets getting oh i'm sorry no but i think it's good and also like what we talked about before like when i started skateboarding in school now being part of the olympics there will be much more acceptance and probably more opportunities to like make it more wide range like, yeah I'd say. Mm, like going bigger to... acceptance obviously there should be always this underground hardcore punk rock whatever i don't give a fuck part of Fear. skateboarding but it will always exist these older guys like full of tattoos treasure many ramp skating bowl they will always exist and they w won't compare that much about olympics if they suddenly have like three four big bowls they will skate there as well so this kind this part of skateboarding should never die and it will never die there are always people who say i don't give a fuck i just go skateboarding whatever i skate the streets but it's also cool if some people want to make a living of it that they have more opportunities if you really want to make a living you need like olympics whatever bigger sponsors like car companies whatever supporting the olympics so i Or, think there are more advantages than disadvantages pretty nice perspective about the olympics and i agree with you it's going to be uh, more support after the olympics yeah and uh, honestly what's the difference between street league skateboarding and olympics it's actually nothing is the same but it's I... actually the same it's just more money and i don't even watch street league i've watched it twice in my life but it's cool it's cool i'm happy that good skateboarders can make a living of it and get good contest money it's super cool yeah i agree with you so do you think it's difficult to make a living as a skateboarder yes mm. yes it is. It is. you have to work hard you have to take it like, seriously. yeah and right. have luck okay and have you tried in the past yeah, I, i actually did it because but i like i said i had luck i had like from one sponsor it was like a bigger company having several companies they gave me money every month and skate a bit contests had luck in the contests a bit and also like being like skateboarder kind of dude i had the opportunity to yeah do some uh, more stuff more or less related to skateboarding i did like a publicity for desperado spear ones and, and like little pieces like that just to get you some more money and actually i was like still student and you don't need that much money yes that's true so you um, did like some video project as well there you get some money and like different pieces and it was cut. somehow i managed yes so what would be your advice for a person who wants to make a living from this well it's important like just Build, build like your own brand not making a brand not starting a company but making you a brand oh all right and being marketable it's important exactly exactly you don't have to be the best skateboarder if no one cares you have to be charismatic like uh like make yeah companies yeah. that companies are interested in you and say okay it's cool Oh, and he really promotes our stuff and he's stoked on getting our stuff and he is like really giving, like what I said before, it's like a relation of taking and giving back. He's really giving back and one company starts with you and others see it and say, oh, he's super supportive, he's really giving back. I want to try with him as well. And then you're there, whatever, it's like boom, 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 like snowball effect. Yeah, this so is starting getting type. bigger, getting bigger, and being visible, being there, being there, and maybe also like like what I said before, I'd like picking some money outside from skateboarding with skateboarding related stuff, probably like if you get an opportunity to do it and 
don't say, no, I fuck that, I hate it, whatever. Take the opportunity. Everyone has, yeah, you have to sell yourself a bit at least to make a living. Of it. It, you can't true. be only, only true, true, true to make it. All these big skateboarders who are really living off it are paid by like these energy drinks. Yeah. For example. Yeah. Or Nike, Nike shoes. Now they are really into skateboarding, but it's not a skateboarding company. So don't talk about being true, skating that Nike shoes, whatever, getting money from them. Because if you really want to live off something, you always have to. I don't want to call it selling yourself. It's not selling yourself. It's being clever, open-minded, not like that. I don't want to do it. Just taking good uh, and choose your opportunities wisely. All right. Let's choose them wisely. And just, just have an open mind for the opportunities. Exactly. And, and don't say no. All right. Nice, nice advice, man. So let's talk about creativity. You are a, be a very creative skater, as we were saying. And what do you think, or why do you think creativity is so important for skating? Well, actually, it's not that. Uh, in my opinion, it's important. Oh. If, if you just watch, like I said before, like these big companies, you don't see that much creative skateboarding. Just talking about whatever. Most videos you see in these channels I've mentioned before aren't, is not that creative skateboarding. It's usually like big hand raised boof on the one side or like flat skateboarding, kick flips again, flat curb skateboarding, high level skateboarding, obviously, but it's not always creative. I like creative skateboarding personally. And for me, All it's right. important. Because where I started skateboarding, there, yeah, I was not even a skate park when I started skating. It was like a bit far away. I was so young. I was like, and I didn't even want to go to the skate park because I was kind of afraid of the older guys. So the first year, I just skated in the streets, trying whatever. And then when I, even when I was older and went to the skate park there weren't many opportunities. It's not like the skate park you see nowadays with Ledge, Hubba, whatever, Eurogap, Pyramide, Quarter, Bowl. There was like one stone quarter, no, two stone quarter pipes, like super bad stone, like the concrete bank and like such a small flat rate, like super bad. If you have like, don't have that much, you usually get creative. You know what I mean? If there's yeah. nothing, you either quit skateboarding or just get creative. You can have fun with the worst obstacle, just thinking about it again and every day with another approach. Like, oh, I could mix that with that. I could mix that with that. That's why I think I skate how I skate, actually. Yeah, because we can be whatever we want. We can be the creative guy, we can be the street league guy, we can just have fun. Yeah, exactly, yeah. but you only can get this street league guy if you have a good skate park. Yes, that's true. I, when I was younger, like I told you, I, I there was no flat rate, there was no ledge. I skated like first time down rail when I was like 18, like three times before. There was, there just wasn't any down right? You know what I mean? If, if yes. you can't skate it, you just don't skate it. Yes, for sure. Probably the first down rail I skated was a street handrail, not a skate park handrail. Oh. <laughs> pretty sure, pretty sure, actually. Like, I, I remember when I was young, I did like a no slide, like five stairs or something. But it, we didn't have a like this down rail in our skate parks where I live. So you just go to the streets. We had the streets, that's true. Skateboarding exactly. is so different right now. Yeah, exactly. Now they have everything to practice. They practice yes. flat and three stairs, five stairs, boom, boom. That's why you, they get these 
street leg beasts, they have the opportunity to train. And you're the same probably when we started skating, we just didn't have these opportunities. So many skaters when I was younger quit skating and I just always kept on and had like, yeah, thinking different ideas, this kind of skating. Well, I also told you like, for example, in Spain, then I skated with this pressure kind of dudes different influences like if you just skate flat with these guys skating curb with this guy skating mini ramp or ball with this guys makes you more open-minded as well and not oh i don't like this kind of skating that's true yes we need to skate. yeah yeah the second question why it's important for me or why, or why i think it's important because skateboarding obviously it's sports but i also see it like kind of art like a way of express yourself. It's more like me also having studied sports related to school, you see other yeah, kind of sports, like every movement has to be the same, perfectly ex executed and boom, 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 everything the same. In skateboarding, it's different. Sometimes like the n not super perfection makes it look smoother like this. Oh, what I was talking before. Yes. This, you know what ah, it's mean. different like this ah, you know what i mean it's just like this kind of style and like the way you do it uh, yeah and that's yeah also creativity like creativity does not only has to be like doing creative tricks like there are also like people like do skateboarding kind of like longboard dance dancing around like this freestyle kind of stuff you've seen it like doing all the weird revert stuff it's also it's like for me, it's like expression. It's uh, they express themselves. For sure, it's an art. That's the beautiful part of skateboarding that you can be whatever you want. Exactly. And you can do it alone or with your homies. That that's beautiful. I know yeah. what you mean. Um, yeah, and also I, that keeps you motivated. Man. Like yes, for sure, keeps you keeps you in the in the game. That's true. Um, so, uh, how is a, how is your daily routine? How is a day in your life? Uh, you say that you you teach in, in your school and and you have like two hours to skate a day. So you yeah, skate more, every day. Yeah, when weather is good enough, I do. Yeah, I usually get up like at well oh, six o'clock in the morning, six six twenty six twenty. I stopped getting up at six. Just like eating a bit, like a bit of bread, two or three coffee, and going to school, being there at 7, 7, 10, 7, 15, because at 7, 30, kids start arriving, then being at school until the bench, one o'clock. Some days I have to go home, like for, have one hour break, I have to go back there until four o'clock, and then usually go. Yeah, skating afterwards, then coming back in the evening, eat or in the afternoon, eating coffee and do my paper shit for school again. Then maybe some days I try to do a bit workout at home, like the balance board. I don't know if you've seen the videos of me. Yes, of course. Yeah, balance yeah, board. Bit, yeah, with black roll as well. Just sometimes I try to do it, but you know. Don't always, yeah. Okay. I just don't get to do it like once or twice a week. I try sometimes more in winter when I have more time and less time for skating. I can do it just to keep yourself in shape, train your balance and all that like kind of tuck knee movements keep you in shape. Usually, yeah. All right. Some movements of skateboarding are pretty hard, like this tuck knee stuff. And if you do it on the balance board, Afterwards, it's easy doing skate. Yeah, it's kind of yoga, but not not that gay. Uh, uh, no, it's not gay yoga, but you know what I mean. It's like yes, oh, yoga, doing that, and then you're on your board and you do pretty similar movements actually. And do you and do you think that is good for for our skate skills to train yeah, for sure. a balance board? Yeah, for sure. Because you train your core, that's like more power. You stretch yourself like 
what I was talking about. Like I always call it tacni. I don't know how it's called. Like going down with your knee on on the on, onto the ground. Actually, you okay. usually never do it, and it's like super good stretching and always like also sitting with your ass on the board. It's like vroom, vroom, stretches your whole body, and it's like always like bit training and also st stretching and training your balance as well. All right, all right. Nice. I'm going to practice it. Okay, yeah. Sebastian, the conversation is about to end. Last two questions. The first question is, what if I tell you in this moment, like, hey, Sebastian, I'm going to offer you a job where you are going to work on skateboarding. You are going to teach skateboarding, but you are going to earn a half of what you are earning right now in your school. Would you accept You have to quit your, your actual job. No. But what do you, you, you don't accept? No. No. No, Simple. I could do, I, I could start my own skateboarding school and not make any bad money, but I like my job, like I told you before, and like I have this kind of security. If I really wanted to make it in skateboarding, I had tried it. You know what I mean? Yes, of course. I, I like I told you, I lived. So some time basically from skateboarding and uh, it's cool, but I don't know, I'm 30 years already. Uh, okay. And what that means of being 30 years, do you think, do you think that is there an age to quit the skateboarding? No, I, I feel better than ever. I, I, I think that I've never skated better than now. It's oh. pretty weird. Yeah. And with your body, you feel, you feel pretty nice right now. Yeah, better than ever. Like now I'm more conscious. That's why I told you, like I try to do that kind of workout sometimes to keep in shape. Yes, for sure. Just to be more conscious of your body. Just like don't get wasted, don't drink so much, don't on, only party, whatever. Just I want to keep on skating when I'm 50. So Uh, you have to work on it. Let's make it happen. Let's work on yeah, that. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I'm sure I will. I'm totally convinced. I would do with that. I am. Um, I, I don't have any doubts. I will skate with 50. I'm sure. Yes, I like the way you talk about that. Let's make it happen. I'm with you in that plan. <laughs> All right. And the last question, Sebastian. Um, which message do you want to leave to the skate community? to all the, the people that are looking for a dream, for a skate dream, you know what I mean? What is the, your, your advice, your message, your legacy? The skate communities listen to you right now. Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty hard question, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, a lot of thoughts come to mind, but... Yeah, no, one sentence and a few more sentences. Less <laughs> talking, more skating, or... Oh being hard, shut up and skate. There's so many people talking more about skateboarding and yeah, talking bad about others and whatever and saying, blah, 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 he can't do, no, no, no. Just skate I, and do it better yourself. And many people as well, like comparing about, I don't have that, no, no, no. There is no one skating in my city. We don't have a skate park. You always can skate. I most of the time skate on my own because like I told you, I when I have time, it's like after school, I can't keep on working. I'm like, my brain is full. I need a break. And then I go just skating one hour. And usually when I go skating, sometimes friends have time, but usually they are working or whatever. I work again in the evening. So I skate on my own a lot. So. It's no excuse, just skate. If you want to skate, you always can skate. And I skate so bad skate parks, honestly. Also, often, like I told you, in the corona time, I just went to a parking with flat ground. Two months, every day there. If you want to skate, you can skate everywhere. On your own, whatever. Just skate, enjoy it, and don't compare about anything. Obviously, it's hard but you can make it. Stay focused, motivate yourself. That's why it's important to get a creative approach to it. Challenge yourself. Don't compare maybe to others. Improve yourself. Challenge 
yeah, challenge yourself, improving yourself. It's better than not comparing with others, like, oh, he's better, he's, I'm better than him. Try to do it with yourself, like, I, today I want to improve, I want to challenge myself, getting better, me. And that, what you can do it everywhere, like, just doing a better many. Yesterday it was 20 meters, today I want 25 meters, whatever. Like, or 10 seconds, no manual, or all eat that. Like, you can do it everywhere. All right. Yeah, thank you. I agree with you. Let's yes. skate for ourselves, not not for the others. Yeah, it's hard to motivate yourself, but you can. It's per you, you can do it. It's hard, but it's all here. For sure, man. Thank you for the words. And thank you for accepting the invitation, Sebastian. Yeah, for sure. A pleasure, man. Yeah. yeah, I hope that we can skate in the near future. Yeah. Maybe there, maybe here. I don't know. Yeah, when all that shit is over for sure, it would be nice. For sure. Thank you, Sebastian. I yeah. hope you have a great day and yeah. that you can skate today with very yeah. nice and creative. Oh, already out here. Oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot that. I forgot. Yeah, well, that I, I went skating thing. before. I went skating <laughs> before. <laughs> all right. All okay. right, man. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye. Have a nice night. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.